The music just feels so good. You're, 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 you're on the number one. www.radio.com Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Are you ready? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back. It is that time. I'm excited. I'm always excited about these interviews because I get to uh, get some insight on the artist behind the music um and i'm super excited about this interview uh her name is sammy davis yes i know i know everyone always thinks no this is a new this is a new sammy davis s-a-m-i davis and she's on the phone right now with me sammy how are you i'm doing well how are you i'm doing great i'm doing awesome um thank you so much for your time thank you for your music Thank you. Yeah. I, can't, I have to say thank you for your music. So I found um, your sponsored post for this song, okay, which is what we're playing in the background. It's the only time you call. This is your single that's out. Came out in December. Um, I saw the sponsor post for this, and I saw the visuals to it, and I was like, wow. I, I got to I gotta at least reach out. Yeah, at least at least put the – at least shoot the shot, and you never know. Maybe and, – and you jumped on board, and, and – we're locked in, so I'm, I'm excited to kind of get to know a little bit more about you. Uh, we've talked on the phone a little bit, and you just seem like a really, really cool person. So if you're ready, I'm ready. I know I know the listeners are ready. I am so ready. All right. <laughs> so let's do this. So let's do this. Okay. So, uh, I mean, we'll, we'll go to the, to the most basic of, qu- basic of questions. When did you start singing? Um, I started singing when I was... Uh, nine years old, actually. So I kind of started later in life. Um, but I did, I did piano as a kid. So it wasn't like I just jumped straight into music as nineteen. But gotcha. Okay. Yeah. What? What? Um. I mean, because I, I, I doubt you were like you woke up, you know, later in life, and you were like, oh, look at that, I can sing. So you've been <laughs> able, you've been able to sing. I would guess, you know, I'd assume your whole life. What made you? pursue singing as a profession um well actually um if you don't mind me getting slightly personal here um (laughs) my uh basically my mom passed away when i was 19 so i kind of it completely turned my world upside down and i decided life was too short i hate what i'm doing right now so i'm gonna try basically everything that i've ever wanted to try so um that included things like break dancing, which I will never do in public, so don't ever pass. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, all right. Yeah. And um, singing was the one that stuck. That was one of the things I tried and I loved it and it's when I decided to start pursuing it as a career. <laughs> um first of all, oh. sorry to hear about your mom. Uh, no, thank w- you. was that something that she wanted you to, to pursue or was this something where you know, it was just like, hey, you only live once and, you know, no one's promised the next day, the next second. So let me just go ahead and do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, she actually, I don't think anyone really knew that I could sing really well. Right. So she was more, she basically just wanted me to do what I loved to do. So if she knew that I loved singing, she would have wanted me to do that. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Does anybody else in your family sing? No, actually. Um, I've heard my dad sing a couple times, just right. randomly. He has a good voice, but other okay, than that, there you go. All right. <laughs> yeah. my and grandma was a pianist, though. So that's. Oh, I was going to ask about anybody in musicians. Okay, all right. So you got yeah. you have the music gene in the body. You're not the first. You know, you're not. All right, all right. Um, <laughs> can Can you remember a I don't know a specific performance? Um, when you were a little later in life, you weren't like most people say, oh, I was in elementary school. Uh, do you remember a specific performance where you performed on stage and you thought to yourself, like, this is it. This is what I want to do. Um, I mean, there's been a lot. Um, I think the one time I remember wasn't actually a performance, but I it's the time that I remember that I officially decided that I wanted to 
be a musician. Mm -hmm. um, and it was actually, uh, there was a Howl at the Moon in, in Denver for a while, and um, it's a dueling piano bar. And I went there with um, my boyfriend at the time and had a little bit to drink, <laughs> got really emotional, and I was like, this is what I want to do. Gotcha. <laughs> so I ended up going up to the players at the end of the night and was like, how do I, how do, I do this? How do I audition? And uh, yeah, I got an audition two, uh, two weeks later and started doing dueling pianos. <laughs> wow. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. I yeah. like that. I like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Did well, I mean, dueling pianos is is on um, the music. Did you sing while you were doing that as well, or? Yes, yes. It's not just piano. Yes. <laughs> all right, all right. I like that. All right. Is that like a big thing out in Denver? Um, it's not so much in Denver anymore because they don't really have any dueling piano bars that I know of gotcha. in Denver. But gotcha. um, it used to be a big thing. It's actually surprisingly large world. You wouldn't think it would be, but. It is. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So your you have four singles out right now: Uninvited, mm -hmm. Devil, Seaside, and then your newest track, "The Only Time You Call." Um, mm -hmm. When you're getting ready to sit down and write a song, or or let's 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 look at the, the four songs that you wrote. Like, what was your pregame? What what was your lead up into going and actually saying, "All right," was it like? A process over days where you wrote a little bit here you wrote a little bit there uh, or was it like I sit down I do this and then I go right into writing the whole song it kind of depends I guess I'll use um, my newest single as an example um, the only time you call um, that one I, I actually wrote for a songwriting class and this is where I learned a lot of my process actually for how I was going to write out songs. Mm -hmm. um, usually it starts out with like me humming some kind of melody that I hear in my head right. and recording it on voice memo. That's usually how it like starts. Mm -hmm. um, but specifically for the only time you call, um, I decided what the, what I wanted the song to be about first, um, which was basically for lack of a better way of saying it about being the booty call i guess right right right, right. <laughs> yeah and um so i started with that idea and then um i picked a theme to kind of like which what what kind of words i was going to use were all going to be from this theme so mm -hmm. the theme of the song is night um so i used a lot of descriptive words mm -hmm. um relating to that theme specifically and i wrote down um this huge word bank of all words relating to um, night and then words relating to those wor words that are relating oh, wow. to night. It was a huge word bank. Um, and then at that point, that's when I started kind of feeling the melody out and right. um, picking words that work with the melody and um, it just wow. kind of turned into this whole thing from there. But I think that one I mostly wrote in one sitting. Gotcha. You put a lot of work into this. Yeah, yes. There's a lot of prep for okay, me. Okay, all right. But that's good. Listen, the end product. It's all about the end product. And exactly. the only time you call is... is That's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's a pretty good Thank track. You. It's a pretty good track. So <laughs> definitely uh, worth what you put into it. Um, so for, for me, personally, music mm -hmm. helps me. It's always been like it's 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 always been like my my blood it's always been in my in my being you know whether i'm going uh to do chores uh within the house or i'm going to the gym or i'm at work or i'm driving in my car like i always have music so, there's always music somewhere going on that's helping me do what i'm doing better you know what i'm saying it helps me do it better so uh i've asked this kind of question before to other artists and i want to switch it up a little bit so mm. You have your four tracks, right? You have Uninvited, Devil, Seaside, and The Only Time You Call. So what, what I want to do is I'm going to name the song, and I want you to, to to describe the vibe and what it would help you do on a daily basis. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, all right. I like it. I like it. All right. We're good. We're good. Okay. <laughs> uh, uninvited. Okay. Um, uninvited. It's kind of an interesting sort of empowering song. Um 
I guess it's kind of about like releasing yourself from a toxic relationship. So I would say it's empowering. It's kind of a dance song. Um, and to me, I kind of picture this one as a good song for working out too. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. A good gym track. A little, little get the cardio going, the blood pumping. Okay. Uh, let's do uh, Devil. Devil. Um, that one is kind of i guess it's sort of angry and dark um it's probably my darkest song okay. uh i think it's, i think it's good for getting motivation after a breakup <laughs> oh okay all right all right um <laughs> seaside seaside um that one it's interesting because it has this like upbeat sort of um latin vibe to it but it's about a toxic relationship gotcha. so um, I see I a theme. Say, I see a theme here. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> um, so I would say it's a, a good, I guess, just a good song to dance or jam out to, but also to like kind of release emotion, maybe. All right, all right. <laughs> now I want I want to hear about this because I'm I'm gonna kind of let you know what uh what this song does for me when I listen to it after. Hmm. But uh, the only time you call. Um. That one is my most emotional song, and I would say it's good for crying. <laughs> so good for getting emotions out, like sitting. You're sad. You want to feel more sad. It's a good song to listen to. <laughs> if you're sad and you want to, and you want to just go a little bit darker and into the hole, yes. that's a perfect song. <laughs> and and I not not so much. Uh, not so much the 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 whole part of it, but I I do agree that it's it's a very the the melody and it's it's very um how, how do i say like it 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 it's it like the, the world stands still and it allows me to kind of think mm. you know what i'm saying like mm. to kind of mm -hmm. go through my emotions and, and kind of think without um i don't know it just helps it helps drown out the the world when i when i listen to this song like it's really really good it's really really good um, <laughs> and i and i i'm i'm going to just I'm going to tell the listeners you have to get this song. Okay. You have to get this song. It's available. First of all, all your music is available on iTunes. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and I say iTunes because that's, that's cool. If they go to like your YouTube or the Spotify and they go ahead and stream it, that's great. That's awesome. That's great for numbers and algorithm, and all this stuff, but that don't pay, <laughs> that don't pay bills. Yeah, so we need, we need exactly. people to go out and buy, go ahead and buy the tracks, 99 cents, dollar 25, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Um, so, all right. So you're, you're extremely talented, extremely talented. Um, Thank you. so <laughs> you, you're very welcome. So how, but besides having a, a, a great, strong voice, you play keyboard, obviously you do it on your mm -hmm. videos, your, your Instagram videos. And, and I'm, and I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to tell people go to your Instagram cause it is just, uh, uh, just a roller coaster of, of visuals and sounds and this and that. So they got to go there. Um, but you do your own graphic design. You do your own videos. Like mm -hmm. what else, what, what else is <laughs> Sammy Davis do? Like basically what else do you do? Like you, you do your own, obviously you sing your own stuff. You write your own stuff. Um, you, you, produce your own stuff because you're 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 playing your own now you, you might add some producer help or whatever but um you play your own keyboard so you can basically take yourself on the road whenever you want um you do your own design work i love the new logo love Thank the new you. logo <laughs> really really good okay um so what what else do you do um well, I do dabble in audio production, but I, for these songs, I've been working with a producer. Um, but also, uh, I guess this is kind of an interesting fact about me. I was a synchronized swimmer for 10 years, <laughs> so I can swim. Yeah. Uh, you you uh, are on the strong side. Yeah, I yes. See, I've seen the muscles. I've seen the muscles in the videos. <laughs> and all that. You are on the strong side. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Yes. So no. Yes. So I'm I'm very into fitness. Yes, you are correct. Okay. Um, yeah. Other than that, I mean, I'm mostly creative. I'm very crafty. Um, I don't know. I like in, I dabble in interior design. <laughs> Good. Yeah. All right. This is nice. Okay. All right. So you can build your own sets. Yes. <laughs> you could rec you could record your own videos. You design your own videos. I mean, it's pretty good. You're kind of self sufficient going on there. I like that. I like that. Big props. Yeah. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. 
when it comes to your music, like what do you want? What do you want the listeners to know about you? Not not about the song, not about the, not about the the trauma behind it, but you mm-hmm. as a as a person. What do you want them to know about you when they're listening to your music? Um. Well, I guess I don't know. I strive to be very open and honest and share like my emotional pain and my experiences. So I guess me as an artist um, writing my music is about sharing my experiences to the world so that people who are maybe going through the same thing um, but uh, feel alone don't feel as alone because they at least know one other person has felt the same way Mm -hmm. um, they do now. Um, So I guess, yeah, just that I bear my pain on my sleeve and I want people to know that and I want I want um, mental health to not be quite looked at as as much of a stigma as it is today right. exactly yeah. yeah agreed to wholeheartedly agree mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. a question right a question so yes when it comes to when it comes to music and writing so many artists write about their pain mm-hmm. and I would guess maybe because people can relate to that so well the, the music does great it, the, people can I, I maybe it's it just feels like people are they can easily write about their pain um mm-hmm. do you do you do you see that as a fact do you do you think you'd be able to write like a really really like happy tune the same way that you could write something uh you know pain or hurt or anguish or yeah for me i i don't know if i can i've kind of tried to write happy songs but they always sound cheesy. It's almost like they're not heartfelt. But gotcha. so yeah, like I agree. I think that I think that sharing m- at least my pain <laughs> through right. a song is way easier than being happy for some reason. <laughs> gotcha. okay. I, I understand. Yeah. I, I understand. Yeah. It just it's just something I could use. Some of the some of the greatest like yeah songs are about pain, about breakup, about heartache. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean. Uh, and, and like the eighties freestyle free and eighties, nineties freestyle music. That's like most of the time. That's, that's what it was about. It's about being, uh, breaking up or having your heart broken or being betrayed or whatever, cheated on, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, yeah. okay. all right. Um, those songs are popular because it gives that the voice to that, um, mm-hmm. kind of pain. And that's why people can connect so much better. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Yeah. Uh, you have four singles. Uh, mm-hmm. All in 2001, okay, and mm-hmm. we're officially, in, officially, finally, finally, thank God, in 20 in 2022. Yes. Um, are those singles a part of a bigger project, or are those just singles on their own? What what what's going on in two, what's going on in 2022, Sammy? Come on. <laughs> what's going on? Um, well, I am planning on doing a full length album. I want I want eleven songs for some reason I like the number eleven so okay. there will be um, seven more songs coming out I want to finish it by the end of this year um, and I'm also planning to put a band together so Ooh. that I can perform these songs live. Oh, that would sound yeah. so dope! That would sound so <laughs> dope! I love. Listen, obviously, if you're playing on a track, that's cool. That's awesome. That's great. Mm -hmm. But there's just something about a live band, the freedom, the, I don't know. It just sounds, to me, it sounds better having a live band, just the sound of it. So the four tracks um, are a part of a full-length album. Okay, so you're working on the album. Is... uh, is there a name of the album? Can can you give us a little something on that? Like we like exclusives. We love exclusives here. Yeah. Um, I've thought about it a little bit. I guess uh-huh. I have like the essence of what the name is gonna be about. Okay. Um and I was thinking either mental health or sick <laughs> as the title. Okay. Um I'm currently writing a song right now called Sick and I think it's just because I, as I said before, I'm very open about my mental health, right. and um, and I, I, I kind of every song I've written is sort of in one way or another about my mental health. So right. I thought right. that could be a cool album right. to start with. Do you, yeah. Do you think? And I'm, I'm sure you're, you. I mean, sure you're, you. You you know older music. Do you think? Do you think that's something that's more talked about now? 
um, when it comes to music, when it comes to musician and, and musicians and artists, do you think that's something that's more talked about now than it was back then? Mm. Well, I th- guess what I've noticed is that a lot, a lot more darker songs have gotten popular within the past few years. Mm-hmm. So I think back, like, I don't know, 50, 60 years ago, the songs were mostly happy. Those were like the hits. Or if it was a sad song, it still had a happy vibe to it. So I think, I think nowadays it's more okay to kind of talk about those weird, dark emotions when before it kind of wasn't right yeah so that's what i think <laughs> <laughs> <That's interesting. laughs> okay all right all right um so <clears throat> our listeners are like we love sammy she's awesome how do we find and follow her so do me a favor uh let our listeners know social media wise how they can find and follow you your website all that good stuff go ahead Awesome. All right. I guess I'll start with Instagram. Why not? Um, you can find me on Instagram at S-A-M-I dot Davis dot music. Um, and then I'm also on Facebook, uh, which is Facebook dot com slash S-A-M-I Davis music. No dots in between that one. <laughs> um, and then I also have TikTok. Um, you can find me at Sammy Davis music. And then, um, yeah, my website is sammydavis.com. Okay. So, all right. All yeah. right. All right. And again, let us let us encourage our listeners to go to iTunes, uh, buy all four tracks. Really, really good. They, they won't be disappointed. Um, mm-hmm. I know I personally wasn't. Um, really, really good tracks. Uh, all right. You're, you're absolutely welcome. So <laughs> we're going to do our, our, our last question here um and you kind of let you kind of uh alluded to some of the things that we're going to talk about you know maybe uh uh, before but what are what are three like accomplishments that you're you're proud of up to date could be could be personal could be professional but i mean let's kind of let's kind of shrink it down so in, in 2021 what are three accomplishments uh you think that you have up to this point Um, well, I mean, I guess this isn't an in-process accomplishment, but this is the first year that I've started ever writing and recording and getting my own stuff out there. So to me, I see that as a huge accomplishment because I was too scared to do that before. Um, then let's see. I mean, I I have a degree in audio production. School was an accomplishment for me. There you go. All right. All right. Um, and then, uh. The third one, it's kind of random. I'm a part of a a band called Rocket Surgeons as well. Um, And uh, we've been together for like 10 years. And um, we had a a viral video (laughs) called uh, Broccoli. And that was a pretty pretty cool accomplishment. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. (laughs) All right. All right. All right. I like that. Broccoli. Gonna have to look that up. Gonna have to look that up. Please do. It's it's ridiculous. <laughs> okay. So you've you've performed, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you been able to perform any of the new tracks so of, of your solo tracks? Um, I've performed a couple acoustically, like with my voice and just piano, but I haven't um, performed them with the full production behind it. Gotcha. Yet. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, um, yeah. Which is which? Do you find more pleasure in? Performing on stage or recording in the booth, and this will be this for real. For real, this is the last question. I promise. You're good. You're fine. No worries. Okay. <laughs> this is a hard question, though. Um, I think I like both in different ways. Um, I l- absolutely love being creative, and so recording from home or I- in the studio kind of gives me that creative outlet right. that I need. But I also absolutely love performing. I love the adrenaline rush I get from it. I like mm-hmm. sharing what I've created with people. I don't know. I, I like them both equally in different ways. I like that. And they, they kind of they kind of intertwine because, you know, you, you can't perform tracks that you didn't like. You know, obviously, you got to make them in the studio. But mm-hmm. in, while you're making the, the tracks in the studio, you've performed before. So 
you want to you know what type of music works best for you you know that's what you record and then you know you record what you you know whatever you record you perform on stage so it's a, it's a nice little happy circle right there happy circle right yeah there. <laughs> it's a happy circle exactly <laughs> uh sammy you're you're amazing you're awesome thank you so much for your time um i it's it's about that time it's about that time uh mm. we want to uh debut your track your beautiful track <laughs> The only time you call, all right, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna I'm gonna stop talking. I want uh, you to introduce it, and uh, again, thank you so much. The stage is yours. Awesome, thank you. This has been awesome. Uh, the next song you guys are gonna hear is my newest single called "The Only Time You Call." <laughs> 